The Wii U occupies an interesting niche in the world of consumer-oriented TV-connected devices. While it was being developed, North American TVs were transitioning from a world where analog, composite, and component connections were common to one where HDMI was the norm, and the Wii U is Nintendo's only device to have built-in support for both formats. But while the Wii U is old enough to work with analog TVs out of the box, it's also new enough to have a web browser that supports H.264 video and AAC audio content. Let's take a look at the TV we're going to use. This TV was manufactured in April of 2000, and as you can see, it only has one input, an antenna input designed to receive channels from an antenna or from a local cable system. Obviously, the Wii U doesn't have an output for this sort of format, but if you remember playing on the N64 or PlayStation, you might see where I'm going with this. I'm going to plug the antenna output with the cheapest coaxial cable I can find into a standalone RF modulator. These devices were pretty common back in the day. In fact, like everything else in the video, this is just something I had lying around in my house or in my basement. The idea of a device like this is it would allow you to use devices such as DVD players or game consoles on TVs with only antenna inputs. Normally, the TV would simply receive whatever you plugged into the antenna input port and the TV out port would be connected to the TV. But once the device receives a signal on the video or S video line, it kicks in and starts outputting that signal on either channel 3 or 4. The Wii U didn't come with a video cable that could connect to this device, but it does have a port for the video cable from the original Wii, which could. I'll take this cable and I'll plug it into my Wii U console. The port is between the power cable and the HDMI port and right underneath the port for the sensor bar. It plugs in just the same way as it does on the original Wii. The other end of the cable plugs into the RF modulator. Note the switch on the front of the RF modulator, which lets you switch between channels 3 and 4. Now that we've got everything plugged in, let's turn it all on. Right now I have the Wii U plugged into my high definition TV in my living room. So you'll see the signal pop up there, but not on the analog TV. The Wii U can only output either a digital or an analog signal. To change between the two signal types, you'll need to visit system settings by using your Wii U gamepad. Just navigate to the TV settings icon along the bottom. That's the one that's not a bluish green or a yellowish green, but more of a pea or moss green. This menu allows you to change your TV output type between HDMI and non-HDMI. Selecting non-HDMI moves the Wii U's output over to the small analog TV. The signal is now going to the RF modulator. We'll also want to adjust the aspect ratio so that objects don't get stretched when they appear on the 4x3 television. Wii software will run in 4x3, but almost all Wii U software will be letterboxed. The other thing we'll want to do while we're in this menu is make liberal use of the screen size adjustment. I've already adjusted the screen size to fit this particular television. On most HD sets, you want the screen size moved up all the way, but I'll move it back down so you can see the entire picture. Now that we've set up our video output settings, we can go to the Wii U's web browser. Of course, you'll need a working Wi-Fi connection for this to work. 
This web browser has some interesting features. In particular, it can support MP4 and HLS video playback. Let's go to a site that we know has a live stream that we can watch. Sites like YouTube Live and Facebook Live likely won't work on a device like this, but smaller sites, instead of rolling their own system, will probably use HLS, which is a standard live streaming format developed by Apple. Almost every non-desktop, non-laptop device nowadays supports this format. This site happens to embed a stream that uses plain HTTP instead of HTTPS, so even the outdated certificate store of the Wii U should not be an issue. Just tapping the play icon one more time will make the video start playing on the TV. The video is embedded in the web page in a player. Long pressing on the player will open additional options. As you can see, the TV is currently mirroring what you see in the gamepad. But if I select play video and web page, and then I long tap again, and I select open full screen, that brings up a new media player. I can show and hide this media player on the gamepad screen, but when I look up at the TV, you'll notice that even when the media player is hidden on the gamepad, and the gamepad is showing the site, the media itself, with no extra elements, is being sent out to the TV which makes for a distraction-free viewing experience. As you can see, I can adjust the volume on the television set, and the sound becomes louder. I can pause and restart the live stream from the gamepad. By the way, I have the gamepad's volume turned all the way down, so all the sound you hear is coming from the TV. It affects both the player on the page and the one in the standalone media player. The two are just different interfaces to the same underlying media system on the Wii U. The close button stops the stream, but if I click play on the player on the page again, it'll bring the player on top back up. By the way, the Wii U can also play in 3 u 8 HLS stream URLs enter directly into it. If you have a URL you know is valid but it's not working, try changing it from HTTPS to plain HTTP since the Wii U might not recognize modern certificates. 